If you don't want your Xbox to break, don't play these games. Also, is this big Xbox studio already in trouble? Let's discuss. So Halo had a technical preview this past weekend. It was a multiplayer flight in which players were able to indulge in all the multiplayer madness that they wanted to. And people are generally pretty impressed. They're walking away saying, hey, I had a really good time. I think it's really fun. And the game looks pretty good from what I've seen. The textures and the graphics look really good. There's no Craig the Brute level fiasco that's come out of this past weekend. So fans could rest easy knowing that, well, maybe you miss Craig the Brute. I don't know. Maybe you're wanting for him to make a return of the game. I'm not sure. If you own a last generation Xbox, so the Xbox One and the One X, you're gonna be pretty happy, especially if you own a One X. I was super impressed with the resolution and the textures that the Xbox One X was able to achieve, even compared to the series consoles. And they were also able to go up to 60 FPS, which last flight and back in July, they were not able to, and that's huge for a shooter. So if you're running quality mode on the Xbox One X, you can go all the way up to 4K resolution with 30 FPS. If you want more FPS, 60 FPS, it's gonna go down to 1440p, which is still really good. I really don't see a reason to recommend going quality mode of performance, especially in a game like Halo, a shooter where you're constantly having to change your focus and be on the move. You want, a, you want that smoother frame rate for sure. I really don't see a whole lot of reason recommending going quality mode over performance mode, especially in a game like Halo, a shooter where you're constantly changing your point of focus and changing your uh, direction, you're, you're gonna wanna go for that smoother frame rate. It's gonna give you a little bit of an edge and make it a little bit more enjoyable, I think. The one thing I was really taken aback by was the Xbox One X loading times. Digital Foundry did a side-by-side -side test of the games loading in. And on the One X, it went all the way to like 36 seconds for you to load into the game, where on the series consoles, it was less than seven. You know, people are saying, oh, there's really no like, games to take advantage of like this next gen consoles but the loading times to me i've been spoiled by them those are what truly feel next gen it's like boom loading times are nothing you're already in the game especially when i was playing psychonauts 2 it was like the loading screen animation would pop up and in like half a second it would be gone it was awesome of course the series x handles it the best it looks the best it runs the best it can go all the way up to 120 fps if you really wanted to me personally i'm not sure if i just don't have the right monitor or maybe I'm missing something. I obviously have these big old glasses so my vision's not the best. But to me, the difference between 30 FPS and 60 FPS, night and day. The difference between 60 and 120, I was like, really, really trying to look at the side-by-side -side comparisons and I really couldn't find that much of a difference. But if you wanted to, you can go all the way up to 120 FPS on the Series X. That's a pretty cool achievement because usually consoles can't do that kind of stuff. And if you're a PC player, you're probably laughing at us like, ha ha ha, I've been able to do that for years, but it's still really cool. It's a cool achievement. Also, people are having a lot of fun with the actual gameplay. Apparently, People are saying, oh, it's a return to Halo. Oh, it feels like the good old days. Oh, I don't usually play Halo for the multiplayer, but I couldn't step away from this multiplayer. So yes, multiplayer looks like it's going really well, but we obviously don't know anything about the campaign mode. And that's something that Halo fans and gamers in general are crazy craving. They want a good, solid campaign. They want a good, solid story. Halo 3 and even Halo Reach for me had a really good story. Solid plot, interesting, engaging, all the above. Halo 4 and 5, not so much. So we are craving a good storyline, good plot, good campaign. Hopefully they can deliver on that. Subnautica Below Zero is on Game Pass right now. And I talked about this game in a previous video, but I gotta be honest, right after I talked about it, I completely just, I completely forgot about it. Luckily, I was browsing through Game Pass the other day and I came across it, I said, oh, let's give it a try. And guys, I gotta tell you, it's one of my favorite games of the year and definitely one of my top games on Game Pass. And in this game, you come to this alien planet. I forget the exact planet. I think it's like B6454 or something like that. I'm not sure. But you come to this alien planet that is mostly water or like Antarctic glacier ice land. And you come to this planet to search for your sister who has gone missing while she was working for the shady company called Altera. And uh, it's basically a survival game. You gotta craft things, you gotta craft your base, you gotta make sure you're well-fed, you gotta make sure you have oxygen, you gotta make sure you have water, you're hydrated, you're keeping that skin clear and nice and hydrated. And I thought, like all survival games, this does a really good job of not 
holding your hand. And in that way, it engaged my curiosity in a very natural way. For example, when you first land, you have your just your little base pod. It's just like a little pod and it has a crafting station. It has a storage unit. There's no part of the game that says, oh, step one, make sure you craft blah, blah, blah. And then you craft blah, blah, blah. What you do is that you look at your crafting station, you see what you're able to craft and you say, okay, I need this, this, and this in order to craft a scanner, which is one of the first items that you get in the game. And you go around, you're looking in the ocean, you're trying to be safe because the ocean's kind of scary, and you get all those things, you craft, and that's when it starts. You craft the one little thing and then you just become addicted. You're like, oh, what else can I make? What else? what other things are out there for me to build. There's always something new to discover. There's always something around every corner for me to run into and go, oh my gosh, what is that? But th it's true in this case, for sure. And I think the game does a really good job of showing you these really interesting things and giving you the tools to go out and check it out. So in the beginning, constantly running out of oxygen and having to come up for air is kind of annoying, but I think this game is a lot more forgiving than other survival games. I spent a lot of time in Ark Survival Evolved, and in that game, you can get dropped in the middle of nowhere and immediately a T-Rex can come and just ruin your whole life. You could be building your base in like the safest part of the map and a giant anaconda can come and like break into your hut and kill you. They have those available early on and it's very easy for you to get. So there's no kind of grinding or finding these really complicated ingredients for crafting. It, it wants you to get out there and explore. So they want to give you the tools right away as soon as you can. And that's something I really appreciated, not having a huge list of ingredients in order to make something. It got me going right away. It was easy. I didn't have to spend a whole lot of time looking for materials and things for this one specific thing. I thought that was pretty nice. The story hook was pretty interesting. And whenever I felt lost, I would just, hey, go to the next story objective wherever that may be. And that led me to new areas I wouldn't explore, led me to things I wouldn't have found in my little area where I was just swimming around. It opened up the game a little bit more and encouraged that ex exploration. But yeah, this is definitely one of my top games on Game Pass right now. And it's something I've already spent a lot of time in and it's definitely, I'm gonna pour a lot, lot more time into it for sure. If you wanna get my professional opinions as a guy with a YouTube channel on what's coming to Game Pass, what's good on Game Pass, make sure you subscribe and set your notifications to all. So after years of radio silence, Nintendo at Nintendo Direct revealed gameplay of Bayonetta 3. And that's got people thinking, man, is there an uh, alternate timeline or is there a possibility in this timeline where Bayonetta 3 could come to Xbox? It's not likely, says the game's director, but it's not impossible. So Bayonetta, the first Bayonetta, was released on PS3 and Xbox 360. So what happened? Well, when they started working on Bayonetta 2, Platinum Games was partnered with Sega, and Sega, halfway through, dropped out. The deal fell through for whatever reason. And then Nintendo stepped in and said, hey, Platinum Games, I'll fund this game for you if you make it exclusive to Nintendo. And they were like, bet, awesome, let's do it. So Bayonetta 2, Bayonetta 3 are right now Nintendo exclusives. So people are reaching out to the executive director of Nintendo or Platinum Games. I'm not sure which one, but they're saying, hey, what are the chances of Bayonetta 3 coming to Xbox? And he's saying, uh, you know, chances aren't zero, but the only thing that you can really do is keep signaling your interest to Nintendo. And like you said, it's not impossible. We've seen in the past that the wonderful one-on-one, -on -one, which was published by Nintendo, was able to port to other consoles after a successful Kickstarter campaign. So hey, you never know. Xbox announced on its Twitter that the initiative is going to be officially working with Crystal Dynamics on the Perfect Dark remake, or the game that takes place in the Perfect Dark universe whatever they make, Crystal Dynamics is gonna be involved. What does that mean? So for a little bit of context, The Initiative is a gaming studio that Microsoft founded over in Santa Monica. They themselves have come out and said, this is a quadruple A gaming studio, whatever that means. <laughs> Basically, it means that they're gonna have a lot of money, a lot of funding, and they're expected and they're expected to make games that are so big, so awesome, so miraculous that it goes beyond the scope of what we plebeians have expected from AAA games. So Logan Moore of comicbook.com sees this incorporation of Crystal Dynamics as trouble in the water, so to say. This is not a good sign for him. And he brings up some good points. The initiative keeps saying this game, Perfect Dark Remake, it's an early development, an early development. Well, it's been three years since we've known that they've been working on this. And also, it seems kind of random 
to incorporate Crystal Dynamics. If you don't know, if you're not familiar with them, they have done the uh, Tomb Raider series. They've done more recently uh, Marvel's Avengers, and if you want to go back, they did Gex, those uh, Gecko games <laughs> that came out way back in the day. Uh, why Crystal Dynamics? Why not one of all of the other Xbox studios that Xbox has under its umbrellas now? Personally, I'm not really worried about it. What we know about the initiative is that, yes, they have these big expectations, but they're also new. They were founded in 2000, but they're also new. They were founded in 2018, and they were still looking for key staff members to add to their staff. And we know that games take a long time to develop, not only ignoring the fact that they still have to find a staff and hire the right people, but also develop a game, build the game, distribute the game. It's going to take a while, so it, it seems to be a bit of a reach to be like, where's gameplay footage, man? Come on. But in my brief researching of this, I also found an article written by Jeff Grubb over at GamesBeat, which came out last year, last September of 2020. And he covered in his article, the initiative, the staff that it was bringing over was from Bungie and Crystal Dynamics. Also, they brought in Remy Lacoste, who was acting as a director for the initiative. And he, he was the director for uh, a lot of the Tomb Raider games and for Marvel's Avengers. So these studios, the Initiative and Crystal Dynamics, they're a little bit more closely related than what you see at first glance. It's not totally random that they would work together on a project. Whatever happens, we know like next to nothing about this game. So it's probably best to just sit back wait until we kind of speculate about, oh, is there trouble in the waters? Is development going on the rocks right now? Let's, we'll forget about it until we know more. So a recent software update allows for the latest version of Microsoft Edge to come to consoles, which opens up a ton of possibilities. You can use your browser on your console to access Discord, to access Steam. You can even use it to stream games from third-party sources if you really wanted to. If you really wanted to, you can open up your browser and go over to Google Stadia and use it to stream games. I don't know why you would do that. <laughs> Honestly, guys, if you're using your Xbox to open up your browser to play Stadia, what are you doing? Like, you have Xbox Game Pass right there. If you use Stadia on your Xbox, I might have to come to your house and slap you. I don't know, man. I, it's just crazy. If you want to keep your Xbox in perfect working condition, do not play these games. And this is going to suck for sports fans. But apparently, FIFA 2022 is out here crashing Xboxes. So people will be playing the game, and all of a sudden their Xbox will shut off, it'll crash, and when they restart, it'll give them an error message saying, that there was a ventilation issue. People are saying, what the heck, there's no ventilation issues that I can see, and there's nothing obstructing the vents. Why is this happening? And I, I can just imagine how mad people are getting. If you've ever played a sports game, you know that these people get really, really sweaty. They get really, really salty. <laughs> so I could just imagine these guys or anyone playing for that matter on, in an online match and then just having their console crash all of a sudden. I could just imagine how angry people are getting. <laughs> and this is a big problem because it's also apparently happening with NBA 2K22 and also Madden. And we don't really know if this is happening on other consoles for those versions of the games, but it's a big enough problem that Xbox has gone on their Twitter to address it themselves. Hopefully they can fix it soon because hardware issues are never a good look. I mean, you're probably not gonna listen to me, but if you can avoid those games until they patch it up, until they fix it up, may I recommend, if you love sports games, Dodgeball Academia. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, I love Dodgeball Academia, but if you're a fan of Madden, you're definitely not gonna be a fan of that game. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for tuning into my ramblings. Again, my name is Ray. Make sure you subscribe, set your notifications to all, and we'll see you next time.